everybody, welcome to the Black Sheep Props channel. I'm Steve, and I'm here to teach you the tips, tools, techniques, and materials for building your very own super cool EVA foam props. Now, in our last build, we built the Malawan from Borderlands, and it was crazy awesome. Uh, if you missed that build, we'll include the link in the description below to our channel's homepage, so you can go over there and check out Malawan, or any of the other super cool builds we have there. Now, for this build, we're going to go action superhero comic book. I'm not sure where to put it. Uh, so without further ado, Black Sheep Props would like to introduce you to the newest member of the family. Oh, ha, 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 ha. holy cow. Woo, yes siree, you know what it is. It's the axe. It's Andromache's axe from Old Guard. Check it out. Old, stained up, weathered, leather grip. We've got our black axe head that's kind of got some oxidization on there. And uh, our two metal blades all dirtied up with a bunch of grime on them. Seen a lot of action. Um, wow, really cool. Super easy, super, super easy. Um, so in this episode, making an EVA foam and drama key axe. We're going to go step by step through how to make it. Um, and if you want to build along with us, we have a template. So we'll include the link in the description below to our storefront so you can go grab a template. If you want or don't, just check it out. Watch the video. Um, all right, that's it, man. If you're ready to uh, hit it, let's make something. All right, here we go. This is all the pieces. All right, we've got these two giant pieces, a 10 millimeter and a 12. We're gonna to stick together for the bulk of the ax. And then we've got a little 10, a couple threes, and these two 18s. And that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll end up wrapping the handle, so there's also that, but that's it. That's not a lot of foam. Um, all right, so let's get started. This should be super easy. All right, so here is our 12 and our 10, and we drew a line right down the middle of our handle and we drew a little line on that end and that end. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our Dremel and we're gonna Dremel out a trench right here. And we're gonna take this 3 16 inch steel rod and we marked our Sharpie mark right here at the end. We're gonna clip that off and we're gonna embed this in the handle. And if you can swing it, do yourself a favor, buy some big and some small bolt cutters, that way, depending on how thick your supports are, you can snap them to where you need them with these things. Okay, here we go, we've got our Dremel. We're gonna start Dremeling our trench out. Now, don't forget, we always say this, don't be a dum-dum. Do not Dremel and throw foam dust around and breathe it into your lungs, so wear a dust mask. That is beautiful, look at that. All right, there we go. Good to go. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and we are gonna cut just outside of our line on the handle. All right. Okay, now we're just gonna cut about 3 16 of an inch or so outside of our line. Okay, there's one side. Okay, there we go, we've got both sides cemented. Now, you know the drill with contact cement. Coat both sides, let them both dry. See, you can see how a lot of it's drying already. It dries pretty fast. Once it all dries, then you can make contact. 
Okay, now we're gonna take our piece, we're gonna flip it over, and we're going to lay it right down like that. All right, there we go, man, that's stiff. All right, now we're gonna come back in with our template. Now we've got our whole template transferred over. Now we know when we cut this out, we will not hit our metal support because it's embedded right in the center here. All right, so we're gonna go over to the band saw and the scroll saw and cut this out. All right, that's it. Now we're just gonna keep taking our time. We're gonna be spinning this thing around, coming at it from a lot of different angles so that we can get the whole thing cut out. All right, there we go. Check it out, really cool. Nice solid handle, because we've got our steel rod in there, and you saw how we just took our time and we came in and backed out and then curved around and backed out, then curved around to get pieces out, and you just take your time, and uh, you're all set. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our X-Acto knife, All right, there we go. We pop the center out. Now we can go over to the scroll saw. We can feed our blade through and we can cut that middle section out. All right. That easy, really nice. Now we've got a lot of rough edges here because the bandsaw and the scroll saw kind of fray up the bottom edges, but we're gonna be cleaning this thing up, all right? So we're gonna get our dust mask on and our Dremel, and we're gonna start cleaning this up and slightly rounding over some of the edges. All right, we got that really rough stuff off the inside. Now we're gonna come in with our smooth bit. Okay, we're not gonna soften these outside edges right here, but we're gonna try to soften everything else, all right? So let's go for it. All right, there we go. We did a nice soft edge on all the corners, just so it's not a sharp, hard edge. Not bad. And then, like we said before, we did not do these outer pieces right here, and there's a reason why. All right, so now, that's pretty good shape. Let's come in with some sanding sticks and let's clean it up a little bit. We'll come in with our 80 grit and uh, drag it along the side to get some of those bandsaw marks off of there and drag it along the edge. All right, so we'll get the sides, the edge, all the way around the handle just to really 
clean it up even more than we did with the Dremel. Now we'll come in with our 220. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and on these edges, we pick up these little frays from the bandsaw. All right, so we're just gonna come in and we're going to go right along the edge and knock them off just like that. See that? Nice. Okay, now we're gonna come in with some heat. All right, we're gonna seal this foam. We're gonna tighten it up. Alright, nice. We got a nice soft edge all the way around everywhere, just so that it's not a sharp, hard edge all the way down the handle. And our foam tightened up pretty nice when we hit it with the heat. That's pretty cool. Alright, now we're going to go over to the bandsaw and knock out these 18 millimeter pieces. Okay, there we go. Really cool. Now, those obviously are going to come in and they're going to slide in and attach right on there like that. That is radical. Now, if you notice, these are skinnier than this is because when this sets on here, we want a little bit of an edge right here on both sides just to give it a little bit of dimension. That is really cool. All right, now... We're going to do some totally fun shaping on here, okay? Now, this right here is where we're going to be finally cutting these off at, these marks. But we left it extra long because we want to shape the edge of the blade and then cut it off. Okay, so we're going to draw a line right down the center of both of these pieces. All right, there's our marks on that side and on this side. Okay, so we're gonna come in with our Dremel and we're gonna bevel from this inside line to the top all the way around. Then we're gonna flip it and we're gonna bevel from this line up to that peak so we get a nice taper. All right, now we do the same thing on the other side of the blade. Go from our center line up to our peak, creating a nice sharp peak. You've seen us do that before. Then we come in with a series of sanding sticks just to hit it and it smooths out the dremeled area even more. And you can go as crazy as you want with this part of it. Um, we don't spend a whole lot of time on it, but it does smooth it out. And then we cut it off at the end where those lines are. That way we uh, get a nice clean cut at the end and it retains our perfect bevels on both sides. See that? Nice sharp peak and a nice flat end. Very nice. And that's easy. That technique is really easy. And then uh, as you always see us do, we tighten that baby up with some heat. It tightens up the foam, glosses over the surface, and uh, helps that peak be a little bit stiffer than it normally would be. Um, looking good. Nice and shiny. Sharp peak. Nice end. Very cool. Okay, now we're going to begin coming in and sticking these 
blades on, but what we need to do is a little bit of figuring and we have a diameter for this piece and we have a slightly bigger diameter for this piece. So we want to make sure this is centered in there perfectly. So we, if we take this two millimeter piece of foam and we lay it down right here, that will lift this piece up just enough to where when we slide it in there and attach it, it will be perfectly centered on this side and on the other side. Let's give these a second to dry. Okay, here we go. Now we're gonna lay our two millimeter piece of foam down, just like that. That's gonna raise this piece up to exactly where we want it. Now let's get this ready. Okay, we're gonna be right about in here. And we wanna make sure that these are held down to the table. And we're going to stick this down and that down and that down. Okay, there we go. Okay, we got good contact everywhere around. All right, there we go. Look at that, that is perfectly centered, okay? We got the same height for the little lip here as we have on this side because we used our two millimeter piece of foam. Very cool. All right, let's do it on this side. Got our tapered blade. Now what we're gonna do is this, is we're gonna go over to the bandsaw and we're gonna knock a straight cut off here so that the blade ends right where the bracket ends. Okay, there we go, look at that. Beautiful flush cut on all four edges. That is pretty darn tight. All right, now we're gonna do these little three millimeter pieces, but we're adjusting the width of it a little bit because we want the edges to sit just to the inside of this diameter. Just like that. Okay, now we're gonna come right up to the bottom edge of that circle and we're gonna put the tip right there and we're gonna stick it in just like that. But what we're gonna do first is we're gonna get our Dremel out and we're going to sort of round the outer edge off just a little bit. Okay, there we go. We got a nice softened edge. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the top and we're going to cut some of our tip off, just like that. All right, there we go. Nice. We cut a little bit of the tip off and now we can come in and we can stick that down and that's going to look pretty nice right there. Let's do the same thing to this one. and get our tip right to where we want it. Draw our back line. Super glue here. And we use our squeegee to paint our area perfectly. Okay. Stuck it all down. That looks really sharp. I like that. Like the soft edge and then the taper down at the front of the point. And I really like this little edge we've got here. A little drop off. That's nice. All right, that's pretty solid. Okay, now we're gonna come in with a strip of three millimeter foam, all right? 
and it's about an inch and an eighth is how we're going to cut it. And we're going to use this to wrap our handle. And you've seen us do this many times before. You cut the end of your wrap on an angle and we're going to wrap it like when you wrap a baseball bat or a golf club. Okay, now, because we cut this long angle, what this is going to do is we can start this flat edge right here, like that. All right, let's get our tip down. Now, what we, the reason we cut that angle is this will come around, and it'll line right up like that, and then we'll wrap it around as we go up. All right, that's how you do it. So... Okay, we're going to go part of the way. We'll go a little bit at a time, all right? So we've got a section of our handle, and we've got our wrap done. Let's let them dry, and then we'll start wrapping it. Okay, we're going to start just before the end. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to start wrapping this, and we're going to wrap it tight, all right? So we're going to go really super tight right there, and we're going to continue to wrap it tight. And now we're going to go right up alongside of it, just like that. Okay, now we're going to slightly overlap it the whole way around, okay? So we're going to come over to here, and we're going to wrap it really tight. And we're going to slightly overlap it. And that's it. Just keep going around the whole piece. Like that. Okay, that's it. Just take your time. We're going to do the whole thing. Let's coat a little bit more. Okay, now we came to an end right there. Now we're just going to cut another strip. And we're going to start right here. And we're going to continue wrapping all the way up until we reach this little piece right here. Okay, we're going to get a little bit of contact cement right up against the edge. This is kind of, might get a little bit messy, but we can clean the residue off later. Now we've got contact cement on the edge and a little bit on the edge right here. Perfect. There we go. All right, let's continue around. Okay, now we're coming to the end. So we drew this angled taper right here. We wrapped it around and did a test where we think it's going to come to an end, right about there. And then we drew our angled line right here. So let's go ahead and cut it off. We're going to come in and we're going to put this down right in there like that. Ooh. All right, let's get a little bit of contact cement down in there. Okay, we got it on a piece of foam. Okay, we're going to get it down inside there and up on there. Okay, now we're going to get the tip down in there. All right, there we go. We wedged it in. All right, that is not terrible. Not the best, but it's not terrible. All right, now, like I said, we'll come in with the Dremel and we'll clean up wherever we have glue residue. All right, that is very cool. Now, we left a tiny bit at the end because we want to cut a nice flush cut off of the end, okay? All right, there we go. Nice, nice flush end. 
Now we're going to come in with this 10 millimeter piece and we're going to cut it out. It's going to be. All right, there we go. We got a little angle cut. Now let's go ahead and slightly round off both edges. All right, there we go. Softened edges. Now this is going to come in and stick right down on the end, just like that. All right, we made our mark. Now let's use our mark when we're sticking this back down. There we go. Okay. Mighty nice. Okay, now this is all raw foam. Let's tighten it up. All right, there we go. Look at that thing. Wow, is that sweet. Very cool. And super easy. You saw how easy this thing was. Totally easy. Um, man, I'm loving these taper blades. That's cool. Um, all right, that's it. With that little detail popping the cap on the end, that brings the build portion of our old guard axe to a close. Okay, here we are at the spray stand. We're going to begin coating our old guard axe with our Plastidip. And you know what we always say, even if you're outside in a well-ventilated area, do not spray without your respirator. All right, there we go. Coated with several coats of Plastidip. It's still wet in a couple spots, but we're gonna hang it up, let it dry, and then this will be the easiest paint job we've ever done, probably. Okay, now we're gonna come in with some really simple painting, okay? We're gonna come in with our satin nickel, and we're gonna hit the blade, and we're gonna hit this little cap on the back end. All right, there we are. Sprayed our blades, sprayed our end cap. All right, let's hang it up, let it dry. Okay, now we're gonna come in and we're gonna start doing our wrap that's on our handle, all right? So we're gonna come in with our real brown. All right, and we're gonna get our sponge brush coated. Now, we're gonna hit around on this wrap. We're not gonna completely coat it because we want a little bit of the dark to show through. And because it's a sponge brush, it's not going to get in the crevices. So we're going to leave dark crevices and we're not going to completely cover all of it. Perfect. All right, this is not perfect. What we did was we came in with our sponge brush and when we hit it and it doesn't get in the corner, so the corner under each wrap has got a dark edge around it and we also didn't completely coat the flat sides we kind of left it a little bit broken up so you can see some of the dark spots through it so it's already helping with kind of the aged look right. okay now while we're letting our brown dry we're going to come in with our pure black
we'll use the brush where we got to get into tighter spots, but we'll use the sponge for the overall fill like this. All right, there we go. That was not hard at all. Um, we're just gonna use our brush and we're gonna come in and get all the sides. All right, just take your time. Just be careful around here where we wanna cut in kinda tight with our brush. And then we're just going to do all of our sides, flip it around and then do that side and we'll be all ready to go. We looked at some other pictures and this end of the handle is actually black. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Right up against our, our wrap. All right, there we go. We've got our black cap done. We've got our black done here on both sides and we cut in on all the insides. Did these little strips right down here. Looking good. All right, let's let it dry. All right, now we're gonna come in with our raw sienna and we're just gonna hit just like that in some spots and it's gonna pick up on the edges of each of these wraps. See that? That's what we're doing. And we'll put some heavier spots and some lighter spots. All right, that is some old sweat stained, worn out leather right there. Not bad, three tones, super easy, looking good. All right, now comes the wrought iron. You've seen us do this on almost every single build we've weathered up. And we have a nice way to make our black look a little bit oxidized, okay? We just don't want it being flat black. Okay. And we can do that by coming in with this matte finish wrought iron paint, okay? And what we're gonna do is this, okay? We're gonna get it kind of heavy in a lot of spots. Like that. See what's starting to happen there? It's already starting to get that look. We just don't want it being solid black. That is nice. All right. We see our gray all in these areas, the wrought iron. And we're just gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, slightly broken up, just subtle enough to have the tone change when you're looking at it. Beautiful. All right. Okay, now our last little detail, we're gonna make a mud wash. So we're gonna come in with some brown and some black and a tiny bit of water. All right, now we're going to drain most of the water out. Add some more dark spots. All 
All right, there we go. That's pretty cruddy. Now we're just gonna take our time and do the other side of the blade. This thing turned out fantastic. We've got our kind of stained up weathered leather handle. We've got our oxidized black head. You can see the gray patches around there. And we just added some grime to our blade. Um, that's it, man. That is looking really cool. And that thing was so super easy. Um, all right, so with that last detail, putting the mud wash on the silver metal part of our blade, that brings Andrama Key's axe build to a close. There you go. Nice and easy, like we said. Um, super, super easy. We put some a, a steel rod in the handle there for stability. Real nice. And then the build was super easy. Uh, just cut out the whole axe head and handle shape on the bandsaw. Um, put these two little tiny details on the body. Did our two blades, did our cool tapering of our blades, which was really neat. Uh, popped our cap on there and wrapped our handle. Um, super simple, not very many pieces, totally easy. Um, and it turned out fantastic. Um, I like uh, the weathering on here. The gray oxidized look on the metal is cool. The stained up leather grip is jamming. Really, really easy to do. And the grimy uh, steel blades are jamming also. So that's it. That pretty much concludes making an EVA foam and drama key axe. Ooh, yeah, hope you liked it. If you did, give us a like, share us with a friend, and subscribe to this channel. And together we're going to go step by step through a lot more super cool builds. So that you get the props you deserve. Thanks for coming. <laughs> See you next time.